Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Revs a lot. What I'm gonna be doing today is just giving you guys an update of how the clutch is working so far. I haven't uh, installed the shifter bushings or the short shifter adapter yet, mainly because I wanna get an early start on something like this, just cause I feel like I'm. it'll take me a while cause I've never done anything like this before. I gotta take out this whole console apart to get to there. It's my daily and I don't want to um, have something go wrong and then I don't have anything to drive. Well, I have the SUV, but it's too boring to drive. I don't like driving it unless I have to. So right away, first um, takeoff, I stalled it. Right leaving the uh, shop, I stalled it instantly. Uh, so I was just not used to how quick it grabs. So it's grabbing. Like, I'll try to put my foot to the side here. It's grabbing right there. It's already starting to grab. You can feel it right there. So anybody that knows that has a fortune, I'll throw it in neutral. Usually um, with the stock OEM clutch, you would let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. It'd grab around here. And then you just, actually it would probably grab even later. Like it would just grab at the very last second. So it's like right the long travel and then it would grab. Now it's literally grabbing right there. Like instantly almost. So. That takes some while to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's all right. So this is me just backing up. Once you get the hang of it, it's okay, but at first it's a little tricky. Um, I did stall it a few times, but now I haven't stalled it since. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear, but there is a slight noise coming from the car. I don't know if it's the clutch itself or the throw out bearing. Um, Andy did tell me that the, the uh, spec throw out bearing was junk and I should have went with the OEM, but uh, I just had my appointment scheduled already. And I didn't have time to reschedule and they were waiting for me for a while to get this put in. So I didn't reschedule the appointment. I said, screw it. Let's see how long spec throw out bearing last. And uh, not sure if you guys can hear that, but it, it sounds like a Chewbacca noise, I guess you could say. It's kind of like, it's hard to explain the sound, but it's kind of a weird sound. But after a while of driving it, it goes away, but on a cold start or where it's not warmed up, it's really loud. So I'll, I'll see if you guys can hear it here. See that noise there? Now, that was not doing that noise until me being unable to control myself. There was a A4 S line flexing his launch control at me at the set of lights, just bat, 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 and then he just launched it and he took off. So then we got another set of lights and I told him, ah, I got a new clutch and flywheel, I'm trying to break it in. He said, oh, don't break your car. And then he started banging off that launch control again. Bat, 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 bat. So of course, me being me, I was like, uh, I should be able to beat an A4. I'll just go three quarter throttle. I won't take off too hard. So I launched around 3000 RPM. Keep in mind, I only had 300 kilometers. So it probably had about 180 miles on, on it. It recommends 500 miles for a break in. And I was like, okay, three quarter throttle. I'll take off around three grand and I'll give it three quarter gas. I won't go full out. So I took off around three grand, shifted at like 5,800 and I got smoked. So it was totally pointless. Um, I'm guessing the A4 was tuned. I thought that's all I would need to keep up with the A4. He took off, he beat me before I was in second gear. He was like two car lengths ahead. So um, I didn't break in the, the flywheel and clutch like I should have. I'm not sure if that affected it, but the next day uh, I drove normal after that. I've been driving, I haven't given it more than half. I've been actually accelerating at like quarter, quarter gas, like barely giving it anything. The highest I revved was four grand before that. So um, I, I thought I, it was okay to just give it three quarter gas. And then the next day when I took off, it was making that noise. So I don't know if I screwed something up with my uh, low self-control. I think I might've messed up the throw bearing, but I'm 
I'm hoping that it goes away and I'll just keep breaking it in like I've been doing. So we'll see. Fingers crossed that nothing major happened. It's just uh, part of breaking it in. I have read that sometimes it makes that noise and it goes away, so we'll see. But anyways, other than that, just um, quick thoughts on the lightweight flywheel. It is really jerky, so uh, let me slow down here. Like even in fourth, usually with the OEM flywheel and clutch, you can shift fourth and third. You don't feel any jerkiness, but with this, you feel it. I'm not sure if it's because I'm letting out the clutch too fast, just still thinking that it grabs real late. But if you let go really slow, you won't jerk it. So first gear, usually with the OEM, I'd rev to about 3000 RPMs. Now I can rev to about 2500 and shift into second and it's fine. Like usually with the OEM, I just rev to about three grand to, to make it not bog. Now it doesn't bog as much in the lower RPMs. It picks up speed a little better. Um, keep in mind, like I said, I only, when I take off, I only give it about a quarter gas. I'm not going all out. Um, oh, and another thing is that noise doesn't really do it if you're moving, but it's only from a dead stop. So if you're slightly moving, you won't hear that noise at all. So hopefully it'll go away. If not, well, that's an expensive uh, lesson to learn. Wait till the recommended break-in period. So taking off is a little tricky, especially on a hill. Um, on a dead stop on a flat surface, or downhill is easy, flat surface is easy now, but the first few times it was a little, little difficult, but I got used to it. Now it's, uh, it's fun, I like it. Um, I can already tell that it accelerates easier. Give it barely any gas and it accelerates pretty good. It's uh, easier on gas when you're accelerating now, but when you're just cruising on the highway, it's a lot harder on gas. Just because the rotational mass of the heavier flywheel, I think just the mom keeps the momentum going and it's easier on gas now. Uh, my gas mileage, I'm babying it, and I'm getting about the same gas mileage as of whereas if I would drive harder than I do now. Lightweight flywheel, harder on gas, harder to take off on a hill, a little more jerky if you're not careful with it and you're just a little sloppy with your shifting, it's gonna jerk the car. Even in fourth and fifth, you'll feel a jerk um, if you're not letting it out real slow benefits of the lightweight flywheel that i can see is when accelerating i'm not sure if you guys will be able to see i'll try to duck a bit here so you guys can see the rpm but and like i'm barely pressing the gas right now so uh, another thing I noticed is the engine noise is a lot louder in the higher RPMs. Let me bring it to about four grand to show you guys. Like around 3,500, you can hear it just starts roaring way more than it used to. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that well, but. All right, I gotta slow down. It's grabbing right there. Now it's in gear. Try to put my foot a little more to the side so you guys can see. And it grabbed right there. So, oh, I got that press on it here, merging on the highway. So, um, one thing I noticed is the clutch feels more springy. I don't really know how to explain it, but the OEM clutch didn't really spring your foot up like this one does. Like this, it's like super, it like bounces your leg up. Um, I really like it. I feel like that's gonna help the shifting fast. It, as you can see, it's a lot harder on gas. I mean, it's, it's not good on gas to begin with, so the lightweight flywheel probably adds, uh, takes away a mile or two per gallon, but, here, I'll try to slow down and show you guys what like fourth gear does at let's say quarter throttle, half throttle. And it's snowing, oh my god, we gotta drive 70. 
unless you have a SH all wheel drive. Giving it about a quarter throttle right now, so the audio from my cell phone is garbage, but uh, it is what it is. So if you don't see a POV view, it's usually I'm using my cell phone. Also, when rev matching, you barely gotta tap the gas, and it brings those RPMs up, so it's a lot easier to rev match and downshift because it grabs you right away, as where the stock clutch you. You rev match it, and then by the time your clutch grabs, your RPMs dropped a bit, and you're not going as fast. But this is just a lot easier to do the uh, rev matching when downshifting. Uh, my clutch and flywheel is on a line of credit, so my line of credits for my car parts, whatever money I make from YouTube, which I haven't made any yet, I'm still waiting for a paycheck. And uh, once I do, then I'll let you guys know how much it is, and if it's decent. I'm just gonna buy my car parts with the line of credit and my YouTube paychecks will pay the minimum payment or extra, whatever I can do. That way I can keep the content coming for you guys. I know it's not a smart financial decision, but whatever. Cars aren't smart financial decision unless you're a big YouTuber and you're making your income from the car. So um, unfortunately right now, I'm not making a killing, but eventually, maybe I will, who knows. If not, it was all worth it, it's all for fun. So what I'm stuck between is buying a K-Tuner. I'm not getting the V2. It's literally like 450 more than the V1.2. I'll just use the mobile app. I would have loved to get the V2, but I just, for $400, 450, 500 more, I might as well put that four or 500 towards other performance parts, AKA wheels or um, high flow pre-cats. I'm going for as much weight reduction as I can with this. As we all know, these are heavy. I believe with the lightweight wheels that I'm looking at, they're about 18.5 pounds, 18.8 pounds. So I'll be, I think the stock rims are 26 pounds. So if I'm shaving eight pounds per wheel, that's another 30 pound savings. With lightweight wheels, I feel like I'd get just as much gains as I would with let's say pre-cat deletes. I could be wrong and maybe you'll call me an idiot, but I feel like uh, I've watched videos where they've dynoed stock OEM wheels and then put heavier wheels and have lost 20 to 30 wheel horse just from heavier wheels. So lighter wheels, same concept. I might gain 10, 20 wheel horse with lighter wheels, especially with an all wheel drive. It's lightweight wheels or K-Tuner. What do you guys think I should get first? I have a feeling you're all gonna say K-Tuner, but I really need rims uh, just because it'll help the look of the car, it'll help the performance. So I might get the lightweight wheels. K-Tuner might have to wait until uh, this summer. I know I said the end of winter I get the K-Tuner, but I might wait till the start of summer. Now, once I get rims, I'm gonna need coilovers. So, uh, cause the ride height is just sits too high. So once I get Lightweight wheels, coilovers, K-Tuner muffler delete. That's all what I have planned for the summer. Hopefully by end of summer, we'll get the high flow pre-cats in there. Um, the P2R ported uh, throttle body, I believe, and the runners, so, and all the thermal gaskets and throttle body spacer, all that good stuff. Um, and I might do lightweight crankshaft pulley, but it's just, if you're getting the supercharger kit, they use the OEM crankshaft pulley. So if I put the lightweight, I'm just gonna have to switch it back when I get my supercharger kit. But the goal is to get it as fast as possible NA. So if that's one of the mods that I need to make it as fast as possible NA, then I'll do that. And then I'll just switch it back to the OEM, maybe give the lightweight as a giveaway or something. So um, yeah, anyways, that's, uh, I'm not sure if you guys even made it through all my blabbing, but that's it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys a quick review of how the clutch works and what, uh, how I feel about it. So, and also what mods are to come. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.
Thanks. Bye.